So today I wanted to um, show you how I cook <coughs> the food for my dogs. Yes, you, yes, Daddy is talking again, isn't he? Um, and I have to do this in a few parts because it's a four-hour process, which then gives enough food for about ten days. So here we go, and I thought it's best to start with the finished product, which uh, is here. So this is obviously already cooked and ready to go. Here we go. Then I've got some uh, eggshells, which is good. They're still quite young, my dogs, so that will give them some calcium for their bones. And also some dried apples. Here we go. And then that can all get mixed in. It's a bit difficult with one hand. I won't mix it so much. So this there is spinach, broccoli, carrots. There is some pumpkin, sweet potatoes. There's rice. There's two different types. Two different types of um, lentils, red and green. Go, Muffy, enjoying it. And then there's also some porridge oats to just dry it out a little bit. So here we go, yes. My little Lukey is coming for a little schmeezy, aren't you, Lukey? Yes, 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 a lovely boy. You've had yours already, haven't you? Earlier on, yes. Okay, Muffy's almost finished his dinner. Here we go. Mm, there's nothing better than watching a dog eat. As you can see how he uses his tongue to help him get the food in. Yeah, the back of his tongue. You know the front of his tongue. Yes, look at that. Yes, it's all right. It's only my phone. It's only my phone. Where does it look? So, then there's a few more steps, of course. Well, actually, now we're going to see how, step by step, the food is being prepared for them. So, here we go. In the kitchen. Could be a bit tidier, couldn't it? Right, so here we have sweet potatoes, which I'm sort of boil it. There we go. That's into the pot. So that's probably about one and a half kilograms of sweet potatoes, which they will eat over ten days, of course mixed up with all the other vegetables. Here we go. Just the last few. So I'll boil this for maybe 20 minutes or so. Then actually I let it cool and I'll put it in the freezer. And so every day when it's sunny outside solar panels so it's nice to see them so hopefully that'll be simmering away over the next 20 minutes so other than the vegetables they are also given meat which I also pre-cook and then I put it into my kids crisp bags as you can see here Inside, as you can see, there's chicken. So every two or three days, they get a piece. They also get lamb and pork mint, which is quite, and I mix that in with their food. They quite like it. So this now goes here to defrost, and then tomorrow they can have it. 
the other thing that I add to the food, which I have talked about in previous blogs, is um, dried apple. Here we go. This is still drying out. And then it goes here into a masher. Here we go. Into the masher. This is dry, like paper, almost. But I think it's still got quite a lot of goodness in it. So it's going to be a bit noisy in a minute. I do this, I mash it up because it takes a lot less space. So here we go, that's that's the apple that I mix in with the food. So the apples that I've tried out, they are from, from my own tree, luckily, and you can see the tree out here. That's my apple tree, and it was absolutely laden. Um, this season, last year, there was about three or four apples, so... But then last year I didn't have a dog. Of course you're entitled to ask why, in the first place, I cook for my dogs. And I suppose the main reason is I know exactly what they're eating, and I've done quite a lot of research online talking to people to see what's what's good for them and what they need. Um, there are certain things they shouldn't have. For instance, they shouldn't have fruit other than when it's dry. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> there must be a scientific reason for that, but I, I don't know. So yes, it's also probably a little bit cheaper because normally I go and shop quite late when vegetables are reduced and I normally buy the vegetables just the day <laughs> well by their use by date on the last day and then normally you pay maybe half for it um, so I reckon I spent probably about 15 pounds a week um, on their food in total um, yeah, that's cooking away quite nicely now. So that'll be another 20 minutes and then I can um, try it. So as I said, other than the vegetables, there are green lentils. Here we go. That go in rice. Brown rice. Red lentils. And then once it's all mixed together, it's it normally needs a bit of drying out and I use porridge oats for that. Here we go. So the sweet potatoes are happily boiling away and they, I will put them in the freezer after they've cooled down and then once I do the proper cooking which is in about three or four days time then I'll mix it all together. So the reason why I'm doing this is because when I got Lukey, um, October 2015, <clears throat> from, the, from the dog rescue, they said that he could only eat one type of uh, food, anything else will make him sick, and it was a Tesco's um, dry food. So I went to buy this Tesco dry food, and I looked on the ingredients, and there's so many E numbers that <laughs> were, <coughs> were part of this dry food. Uh, it had some; it had about two or three percent meat in it, but obviously completely hydrate, de dehydrated meat, or whatever the process is. And I just thought, no, why don't I boil him fresh vegetables and give him proper meat? Um, and then I know exactly what he's getting. No E numbers. E number E numbers z z equals zero. So there you go. That's all for today. 
Uh huh. No. Here we go. You found something. You found something, haven't you? You're making a mess. Yes. It's just time to say goodbye. You're going to say goodbye. Look here. Say goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye from Lukey.